Hello, everyone. Suana Strzok here, continuing the lessons of A Course in Miracles. A uh, little bit of a late start here today, but I'm here. And uh, we are here for uh, lesson 70. And today's lesson is, as soon as I get my glasses on here, my salvation comes from me says all temptation is nothing more than some form of the basic temptation not to believe not to believe the idea today salvation seems to come from anywhere except from you so does so too does the source of guilt you see neither guilt nor salvation as in your own mind and nowhere else. When you realize that all guilt is solely an invention of your mind, you also realize that guilt and salvation must be in the same place. In understanding this, you are saved. It's all in our mind. There, the seeming cost of accepting today's idea is this. It means that nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. And yet we keep searching for it outside ourselves. Just take a look. But it also means that nothing outside yourself can hurt you or disturb your peace or upset you in any way. Wow, where do you blame people, places, circumstances for your being in upset or out of peace? He says, but it also means that nothing outside yourself can hurt you or disturb your peace or upset you in any way. To believe that nothing outside me can hurt me? Hmm. Today's idea places you in charge of the universe. You're in charge. Where you belong because of what you are. Let's remember here that, you know, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having this human experience. So it says, today's idea places you in charge of the universe where you belong because what you are. And there is not a role that can be partially accepted. You either accept it or you don't accept it. There's no in-between here. And you must surely begin to see that accepting it is salvation. So... It goes on to say, it may not, however, be clear to you why the recognition that guilt is in your own mind entails the realization that salvation is there as well in your mind. God would not have put the remedy for the sickness where it cannot help. That is the way your mind has worked but hardly his. He wants you to be healed. So he has kept the source of healing where the need for healing lies. So it goes on and says, you have tried to do just the opposite, making every attempt, however distorted and fantastic it might be, to separate healing from the sickness for which it was intended and thus keep the sickness. Just look at how we focus more on the sickness and we have such belief in sickness, but how much real belief is there in, uh, in healing? How much focus is there in healing? So your purpose was to ensure that healing did not occur. God's purpose was to ensure that it did. 
Today we practice realizing that God's will and ours are really the same in this. God wants us to be healed. And we do not really want to be sick because it makes us unhappy. Why would we be choosing sickness over healing? Just a thought, just a question. Therefore, in accepting the idea for today, we are really in agreement with God. He does not want us to be sick. Neither do we. He wants us to be healed. So we do, so do we. But again, the power of belief is really in this moment gives us the opportunity again that how much we, you know, to look at how much we believe in sickness and we make it real. We are ready for two longer practice periods today, each of which should last some 10 to 15 minutes. We will, however, still let you decide when to undertake them. We will follow this practice for a number of lessons and it would uh, again be well to decide in advance. This is planning ahead. This is building in your discipline here and being responsible and accountable. So to be plan ahead in advance when you would be a good time to lay aside for each of them and then adhering to your own decisions as closely as possible. What brings to my mind is, you know, how willing, how committed am I to my healing? That's my question. Maybe you want to ask yourself that as well. And, and in that, to, to truly put that time aside each day. Again, we're practicing here. We're building the muscle to, you know, bring ourselves to that deeper level of peace that's available through God. So again, it says, begin these practice periods by repeating the idea for today, adding a statement signifying your recognition that salvation comes from nothing outside of you. And you might put it in this way. My salvation comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. Then devote a few minutes with your eyes closed to reviewing some of the external places where you have looked for salvation in the past. Look for salvation in other people. Look for salvation in possessions. You know, looking uh, for salvation in various situations and events. Take a look. And also in self-concepts that you sought to make real. Recognize that it is not there. And tell yourself, my salvation cannot come from any of these things. My salvation comes from me and only from me. Now we will try again to reach the light in you, which is where your salvation is. You cannot find it in the clouds that surround the light. And it is in them that you've been looking. We've been looking in the clouds. We've been looking in the darkness. It is not there. It is past the clouds and, and in the light beyond the clouds. You know, again, simply when we look in the sky, we see the clouds. The sun is still behind the clouds. When the clouds are removed, the sun is there. That's what it's telling us here, to move past the clouds, to see the light, to see the sun. But remember also that you have never found anything in the cloud patterns. You imagine that it did endure, that lasted. It's, it, you know, anything that doesn't last, it changes. It's, it's not real. Love is all that's real. True love never changes. And again, it says, and, and that you want. I'm going to remember, I'm going to speak this again or read this again. But remember also that you have never found anything in the cloud patterns you imagine that endured or that you really want it. So since all illusions of salvation have failed you, surely you do not want to remain in the clouds, looking vainly for idols there when you could so easily walk on into the light of real salvation. Look how much you idolize or we idolize in this world, which doesn't bring us to maybe for some momentary um, pleasure or relief, 
But on long term, no, we're back to again being caught up in these clouds, being caught up in the illusion and in, you know, in, in the dream world. So I'm going to read this again. Since all illusions of salvation have failed you, surely you do not want to remain in the clouds looking vainly for idols there when you could so easily, so easily walk in on into the light of real salvation. Try to pass the clouds by whatever means appeal to you. If it helps you, think of me holding your hand. Just have that visual at the time. Think of God holding your hand and leading you. I get goosebumps when I think of that one. And I assure you that this will be no idle fantasy. Walking with God is what's real. For the short and frequent practice period today, remind yourself that your salvation comes from you and nothing but your own thoughts can hamper your progress. Remember, this is a mind training program. We're reviewing our thoughts. You are free from all external interference. You are in charge of your salvation. You are in charge of the salvation of the world. That sounds pretty big, doesn't it? Say then, my salvation comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's salvation and my own. So I made a few notes here in reflecting on, on, on today's lesson, again, which is my salvation comes from me. And this lesson is, is reinforcing that, that salvation is in us. And, and as we observe our thoughts um, that pass through our mind, um, it, is to, it is to realize uh, and become more and more aware that it is our interpretation and our thoughts about anything that, cause, that causes distress or dissatisfaction or any discomfort of any kind. So, you know, it may be, uh, it may continue as we we practice these lessons to be really difficult for us to accept that that we could be our savior, let alone the savior of the world. So, now, now the ego attempts to convince us that we are powerless and that we're unworthy and that we're limited and that, um, you know, we can't be, we can't be this that we can't be this savior, we, that we can't save ourselves. And, and the ego is perfectly happy for us to accept that uh, the blame for our pain and our dissatisfaction and our discomfort of any kind. Um, and, you know, it's not threatened by, uh, by that, by our remaining in suffering and fear. So, you know, uh, the ego sees, sees all of that as, as, as another tool to reinforce our guilt or, or any guilt. So it is by being willing to take each perceived problem to the Holy Spirit and, and in experiencing the shift that we experience with the Holy Spirit, that's where, you know, the confidence, we gain the confidence that every problem is solved by the Holy Spirit. It gets reinforced through the practice, continued practice of turning over, you know, this, the ego thought system, the wrong mindedness, the distress, the triggers, the, the issues, the circumstances, turning it all over, the grievances, the judgments, turning it all over to the Holy Spirit to release it. That's where we find our salvation. Now, now this, these, um, or the old ego thoughts disappear when the light gets turned on. You know, when um, we, you know, choose the light, the light dispels the darkness. Any of this pain or suffering, um, this driving, um, chasing after the happiness in the world, any of that, you know, look how much it leads into the darkness and an upset. And, you know, turning the light on, on that is what 
what dispels all that darkness. So if we focus on the clouds, then, then we get clouds. If we focus on letting our true self lead us, you know, our higher self, our holy self, you know, then we can go past the clouds to the light. So, and, and again, that's all by, by recognizing, you know, uh, there's a power greater than ourself that'll restore us to sanity. There's a power within us. And when we, you know, turn it over to the Holy Spirit, we will become more and more in touch um, through the Holy Spirit, um, shifting our perceptions to Christ's visions, that we have the power to change our mind. That, you know, um, again, there's great power in the light and there's great um, joy and great comfort and great love and great joy in the light. And darkness doesn't exist in the light. Um, darkness doesn't exist in light, correct. All right. And, and it is either darkness or light. We get to choose. We are choosing. And even when we're choosing not to choose, we are still choosing. I love to remember that one. So again, it is always there in our right mind as we are willing to allow our mind to be healed. Really ask yourself today, how willing, how truly willing am I to be healed? And take that on. Take on some willingness to be healed versus suffering. To be in the space of love versus the space of fear. All right. I'll leave that um, that here at this moment or at this point. That's what I have to say. What hear what I hear spirit um, is saying with regards to this lesson. And again, as always, thank you so much for being here. Um, I so appreciate it. Um, and I, I'm grateful to to be um, blessed with this opportunity to um, be with you uh, for each one of these lessons of the Course in Miracles. Um, I continue to do my work. And um, as you continue to be here with me on YouTube, as you continue to subscribe and, and to like and to comment and, um, and to share these videos, um, I can't say enough how much I appreciate it. All right. My choice is to be in the light. And it's only by doing this, um, these practices, by continuing to stay awake to these practices um, throughout my day, that I have that opportunity to be in more peace and, and joy and love and the abundance, which is our divine inheritance. Okay, I will leave it at that. And I look forward to seeing you and being with you in the um, next video for lesson 71 already. Already. Have a love-filled and a miracle-filled day. Bye for now. Please comment. I'd love to hear, um, you know, what you're experiencing, the miracles, the shift that you're experiencing in the comments. And I'm sure others that are uh, following this channel uh, would appreciate your sharing as well. Let's uh, share these gifts that are being given to us. Bye for now. We'll see you in the next video.